We are on lesson 2.1 and this is page 33 and it's an explorer activity and I'll help you with a little bit of it and then you're going to do some of it on your own. Um, this one's called using the distributive property. Let's read the directions together. It says you can use the distributive property to rewrite a sum of two or more numbers as a product of their GCF and a sum of numbers with no common factor. To understand how, you can use grid paper to draw area models of 45 and 60. Here are the possible area models of 45. So let's go ahead and examine this real quick. These are area models of 45 uh, because if you look at the dimensions, one tall and 45 wide, well, to find the area, you would just multiply those. One times 45 is 45 square units. The, area, the dimension three, by 15, 3 times 15 is 45. The dimension 5 times the dimension 9 is 45. All of those equal 45 square units. Uh, question A reads, what do the side lengths of the area models 1, 3, 5, 9, 15, and 45 represent? Well, those are all the factors of 45. So what we've been talking about now for the last couple lessons, or at least the last couple videos, are you can take factor problems and you can turn them into um, area models. So we're going to do that for question B, except for it's not going to be uh, for 45 because those are all done for you. We're going to, on your own grid paper, show all the possible area models of 60. So I'll get you started there. Uh, first of all, you can borrow a piece of graph paper from me. And when you do that, I want you to label the top of your page area models. for 60 square units. And so what you're going to do here is the same thing as what um, what's given to you at the top of page 33, except for it's going to be for 60. Um, now there's going to be one that won't really fit on your page. If you think about um, a rectangle that's one wide and 60 tall, or one tall and 60 wide, that just won't fit. Um, so you can kind of just you can describe that one, but I'm not sure you're really going to draw it. Um, but then there's going to be one that's going to be 2 by 30. There's going to be one that's 3 times 15. And I can just show you what that one would look like. I'm just going to draw that one right here. It's going to be 3 tall, 1, 2, 3. It's going to be 15 wide. I'm going to draw that and then count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And I think I said it's going to be 3, 3 times 15. But it's not, it's going to be 3 times 20, because 3 times 20 is 60. So you're going to draw all of these. This is 3 units tall, this is 20 units wide. And when it comes to area, length times width is equal to the area. So that's an area model for 60. Now there's going to be 5 more. There's going to be a total of 6 area models. So you need to do 6 of these. Um, and then check with your peers or check with your teacher when you're done. Let's go ahead and get back to the page here. And you can, when you get all those, um, you can check your work. All right, so B. You're supposed to do this on your grid paper, but on the line here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list all the um, list all the dimensions. So the long and skinny one would be a 1 by 60. 1 times 60 is... 60 square units. The next one would be a 2 by 30. The next one would be a 3 by 20. The next one would be a 4 by 15. The next one would be a 5 by 12. And I listed that last one wrong. I'm going to fix that. A 4 by 15. 4 times 15 is 60. The next one is going to be a 5 by 12. And the last one is going to be a 6 by 10. All right, question C reads, what side lengths do the area models of 45 and 60 have in common? And what do the side lengths represent? Well, if I went and if I keep these numbers here, I might be able to show you. If I keep these numbers here, but then I show you my, um, my pictures for uh, 45, that's going to be pretty difficult. It's going to be pretty confusing. What I need to do here is ask myself, um, which of these numbers appear in the, the 45 models as well? And 1 does. And 3 does. Oops, not 2. 2 doesn't because there's no um, 2 in the 45s. So 1 does and 3 does. 
and 5 does, and 15 does. And it says, what do the side lengths represent? Well, what do those side lengths represent? Those are the common factors. of 45 and 60. Question D says, what is the greatest common side length and what does it represent? Well, it's 15. It's the biggest number there. And what does it represent? It represents the greatest common factor. I'm just going to put GCF, greatest common factor of 45 and 60. Now, it's really important that you identify this right here as the GCF. 15 is the GCF because we're going to use that for these next few questions. So what I'm going to do, and this starts to get a little bit confusing, so uh, pay good attention, maybe even watch this twice. So what I'm going to do here is kind of rewrite question D, the greatest common side length. So the answer is 15 is the GCF of uh, 45 and 60. Now, question E says, write 45 as a product of the GCF and another number. Well, that's pretty simple, actually. Go up to the 45 pictures. In fact, I can do that right here. I can go up to the 45 pictures. And my answer is right here, kind of. It says, because um, the reason why the answer is right here is because what did we just say the GCF was? We said it was 15. So it says, as the product of 15 and another, num another number, well, it's going to be 15 times 3. It's this, this is your answer right here. So I know that might be a little confusing, but it should make sense in just a minute. So it says, right, 45 is the product of the GCF, which is 15, and another number. Product means the answer to a multiplication problem, so it's just 15 times 3. And then the second part says write 60 as the product of the GCF and another number. Well, on your um, page, on your graph paper page, you should have, I wonder if we have it on there. Oh, I erased mine. Um, on your graph paper page, you should have, on your 60s, you should have a picture of one that is uh, 4 tall and 15 wide. And that picture right there shows you that uh, the product of uh, the GCF, 15 and 4, is equal to 60. So I know those questions seem a little bit confusing and sometimes you're not sure what is being asked but the key there is, is product and GCF. Product means to multiply the GCF by another number. So what do we then do with these numbers? So check out F. It says use your answers above to rewrite 45 plus 60. So here's what we're doing. We're taking 45 here and we're taking 60 right here and since 45 is on the left, we're going to write uh, 15 times 3 because 15 times 3 is 45. And then um, since 60 is on the right, we're going to write 15 times 4. And then we're going to use that property we introduced a couple videos ago called the distributive property. It says use the distributive property in your answer above to write 45 plus 60 as a product of the GCF and a sum of two numbers. So I already, already did this right here. 3 goes here, 15 times 3, that's going to be 45, plus 15 times 4, that's going to be 60, is equal to 15 times, and then um, you can just add up 3 plus 4, and you end up getting 15 times 7. And what's interesting about that is if you did 15 times 7, you're going to get the same thing as if you added 45 plus 60. And I'll show you, I'll prove that to you right now. 7 times 5 is 35. And 7 times 1 is 7, plus 3 is 10, you get 100, 105. And up here we started with 45 plus 60, so I'm going to show you that 45 plus 60 is the same thing. You can just do that mentally. 5 plus 0 is 5, and 4 plus 10, or 4 plus 6 is 10. So these two things are equal. Kind of interesting, kind of tricky. Um, I'm definitely going to help you on the reflect questions at the bottom of the page because this is uh, we're, we're at introduction right here. We're not at mastery, so please don't freak out if you if this is a little confusing to you. But I think it'll get easier. So um, the reflect says write the sum of the numbers as the product of their GCF and another sum. So here's the deal. The first thing you need to do is find the GCF. What is the greatest common factor of 27 and 18? So what you can do, you could even use a whiteboard. Actually, that might not be a bad idea. 
So for number 6 down here, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think about the factors of 27 and 18. And you might be able to do that mentally. Factors of 27 include 1 and 3 and 9 and 27. And the factors of 18 include 1 and 2 and 3 and 6 and 9 and 18. And you should notice that 9 is the greatest factor in both lists. So right off the bat, the first thing you do on these is that you pull out the greatest common factor. There's a lot more to do here, but that's the first step. Then what you do is you're going to multiply that, because it says product right here. Product means times. You're going to multiply that. We're going to multiply it by two different numbers. I'm going to put those numbers inside parentheses. And the two different numbers are what make, make it true. So watch what I do here. This is how they all get structured. Just kind of memorize how they get structured, and it should start to make sense. So 9 times this number right here has to make the first number. So what goes there? It's going to be 3. 9 times 3 is 27. And then 9 times the second number is what makes the second number, 18. So what does that need to be? It needs to be 2. Now we can check our work a variety of different ways, but one really interesting way to check our work is to simply go and add up 27 and 18. And 7 times or 7 plus 8 is 15. And 2 plus 1 is 2 plus another one, or 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4, you get 45. And that should be equal to this 9 times 3 plus 2. Well, the order of operations says that we have to do what's inside the parentheses first. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 times 9 is 45. Therefore, we got it right. That is the correct answer. So I'm going to rewrite that just a tiny bit neater. I kind of showed my work and explained as best I could. It's going to be 9 times 3 plus 2. Okay, let's do the next couple. The greatest common factor of um, both 120 and 36 is going to be 12. 12 goes into 120 10 times, and 12 goes into 36 3 times. So what I'm doing here is I'm identifying the greatest common factor. And then the first number is how many times 12 goes into 120. And the second number is how many times 12 goes into 36. And 9 and 35. This is going to be a tricky one because 9 and 35 don't share a factor. I'll prove it. Other than 1. 9, the factors of 9 are 1, 3, and 9. The factors of 35 are 1, 5, 7, and 35. And they don't share a factor other than 1. So we still put right here the greatest common factor of 1 and 35 is 1. And then inside the parentheses is how many times 1 goes into 9? That's 9. And how many times 1 goes into 35? That's 5. And we could check our answer. 9 plus 35 is 44. 9 plus 35 is 44 plus times 1 is 44. So that proves that it's right. Okay, I know that's tricky, but we will continue to practice, and you will eventually get to a point of mastery, I'm sure of it.